Hi guys, so this video is for functional anatomy and we are looking at how to approach question 12, um, how to go about planning the content obviously that's in question 12, how it's marked and to give you an example of a couple model answers. So just to remind you, of course, you'll know already that question 11 involves you looking at a particular movement generally from one position to another. So it's a single movement and you've got to only using analysis of the skeletal system provide information on three specified joints so in this case it's from standing position to the forward bend and you've got to analyze the skeletal um, involvement of the shoulder the trunk the wrist and it's worth eight marks every question 11 follows the same pattern and is always worth eight marks now question 12 are similar but a little bit different so they're similar in that they always involve a, an, a single action and it would generally be, be described from pre preparatory position to the execution of a particular movement. So there are three phases of movement, preparation, execution, recovery. The majority of questions I've seen, as I remember, are from preparation, i.e. getting ready to do the action and then going in to execute the action, i.e. doing it. Um, in this case, they've identified particular arm and leg and they've made it grey. So if you talk about what's going on in the other arm or leg, you would lose out on marks. So there's generally guidance to indicate which of the three joints they want. So in this case, they want the left elbow, right hip, right knee. And of course, they've used shading to assist you with that. So it's phrased similarly, slightly different. So instead of saying analyse how the parts of the skeleton, it now says, analyze how the required movement, because the difference between question 11 and 12 is both of them require you to analyze the same skeletal information, but question 12 asks you to also include information about the muscular system enabling this movement to happen. So this is a muscular skeletal analysis rather than question 11 just being a skeletal analysis and you can see because you've got to do more you get more marks so there's 14 marks available for this type of question 12. You may be familiar with Mr Bieber and the requirement really of you to hit all the basics the cake information fundamentally what is happening in terms of the skeletal and muscular system and then what we want to do is encourage you to sprinkle some icing throughout your paragraphs to push for those higher grades and I'll coach you on what sorts of things that might be. Hopefully you know the sort of thing you can include for skeletal system already. We'll be talking about the muscular system as well and I'll guide you as to what that might be. How is it marked? Well it's marked in the same way as question 11. It's levels marking. So the examiner will read through all of your work. They will then look at the criteria or the descriptions for each of these one two three levels we'll ignore zero um, and they will see which of these descriptions fits your work most truthfully so they'll decide if you're in band two or band three based on these descriptions so what we want you to make sure you do is you have most of the accurate information and understanding you break down and analysis means breaking your movement down to the parts and then just and showing off what you know about the parts and putting it almost back together. Um, in the context of the question, so always try to refer to the movement that's going on in the question. So the athlete doing the volleyball block does this, or this joint helps the athlete get off the ground to block and jump in volleyball. Link it to the question and be logical about it. So connect parts of the movement, connect what different joints do, and we'll talk about some movement um, information as well that you you'll be learning for this question once they've decided what level you're in they'll then determine which end of the level you're in if you're in the lower end or the upper end and they'll give you a grade so here's an example of a question 12 figure six shows a volleyball player jumping to block the ball so there they are they're in the preparatory position here on the ground and on the right hand side they're in the ex they've, they've moved into execution where they're actually jumping up to block so arms have changed legs have changed the question says analyze the required movement at the elbow shoulder 
and ankle. So it's given you the three joints it wants you to analyse, ignore all other joints, for the athlete to move from prep to execution, and it's for 14 marks. So what we know already is that we sorry, we've got an acronym for the skeletal contents, sexy Justin Bieber plays music, which means analyze the skeleton, analyze the specific joints that they're asking, analyze the bones that articulate, analyze the planes and movement that are occurring at those three joints. But for the muscular system, we've got to add these bottom three also. So my Justin Bieber acronym continues with plays music at concerts everywhere. And what that refers to is the muscle actions, i.e. there are four roles a muscle might take on, I'll show you those in a moment. The agonists that work, the muscles that are working at each of those joints to make any movement happen, what are the agonists and what type of contraction is going on? Is it one of the three types of contraction, isometric, concentric, eccentric? And then finally, once you've done your three joint analyses, you're going to add a short fourth paragraph on the efficiency of this whole movement. So how efficiently was the volleyball player jumping? And there's a few things that I'm going to coach you to use for that. So what we need to add on is at concerts everywhere, what are the four muscle action or muscle roles? Actions is the A bit. Which type of contraction is occurring at the three joints you need to analyse? And a fourth paragraph discussing a little bit of information about the movement efficiency. So this, you can pause the video and just have a look at this. I've tried to show you what I was kind of just explaining on the previous slide. So we've got to write a series of musculoskeletal analyses. So joint one, whichever they required, you're going to do your normal sexy Justin Bieber plays music, but you're going to add on at concerts, the muscular actions and the contraction type of the agonist just at that joint. Same with joint two, same with joint three. So we've ignored the E part so far. That's how I would coach you to do this. I would also encourage you to, once you've written a joint, leave a few lines or even the rest of the page and go on to the next joint, just in case you want to go back and add on anything if you've got time. At the end, once you've done your three joint analysis of both blue skeletal here and red muscular analysis, one, two, three, you're going to write a small additional paragraph on the movement efficiency of that athlete, athlete's action. So let's get into the detail then. So you may recognise some of the basic cake analysis, the things you must include for the skeletal stuff. And I've just put below that the ACE, um, the role function of the agonist, the antagonist, the synergist. So you must minimally state what muscle is the agonist and what muscle is the antagonist and you can define these other two it will be quite hard for you to give the synergists and fixators we'll talk about those more but um, minimally you must state what muscle is the agonist and what muscle is the antagonist they will be a pair of muscles if you can remember you must state purely referring to the agonist what type of contraction is it doing is it concentric eccentric or isometric um, on the right, then, I've put the sorts of things you could include as icing. Again, the skeletal stuff, hopefully, you're aware of. You know, in some cases, it's just definition. And in some cases, it's giving a little bit more knowledge and showing off. For the muscular stuff, you might then define what is the role of the agonist, what is the role of the antagonist. If you can have a stab at synergies or fixators, what muscles might they be? For the types of contraction, what are the characteristics of Let's say it was a content of contraction. What does that mean? What extra detail can you offer? This means the insertion moves towards the origin, um, or if it's an up phase movement, this means muscular force is bigger than um, gravitational force. And then, of course, at the end there, you're going to pick. I'm going to coach you probably to try and include information about two of the possible five or six things you could write about. And I'll, I'll, there's another video that goes into that. So just to recap, let's go to each one at a time. So the first S, sexy, is discussing axial and appendicular skeleton. Which is it in? Sometimes there's confusion about the girdles. Remember, they are part of the appendicular skeleton. It's just the vertebral column, cranium, 
the ribs and the sternum that are the axial central axis of our body. You'll be specifying which joint classification the joint is. Is it fibrous, cartilaginous or synovial? Often the joints are not fibrous, so if they're selecting three joints for you to look at, it's less likely to be a fibrous joint. It's more likely to be a synovial joint, but it could be the vertebral column, which would be cartilaginous primarily. You'll also, within that, if the joint is synovial, which it's highly likely to be, you'll need to specify which type of synovial joint. And again, please pause the video, have a look at the sort of detail you can give. What they really like is discussing the structural um, makeup of a joint. So we can be really good and show off here. We know it's not just a ball and socket joint, but the ball is a large round condyle, condyle sorry. And if you can name what bone it's on, for example, if it's the shoulder joint, it would be the humerus has a large round condyle at the proximal end, the end nearest the point of attachment, which would be amazing icing. And that sits in a fossa, a depression in the scapula. So if you can name the bone, describe the shape of those bones and which bones have which shape, brilliant. Bit like for the um, elbow joint, let's say a hinge joint. Great if you icing if you can put in that it's a cylinder and trough shaped bones that allow that uniaxial flexion or extension. But if you can specify that the distal end of the humerus has a cylinder, sort of rounded shape that sits in the trough like shape of the ulna, that's amazing icing. So try if you can to learn these little phrases to describe the shape of the bones at these types of synovial joints. So uh, we've done SJ, we've done skeleton and joints. The bones obviously is naming the articulating bones. And again, the icing could be giving that extra bit of structural detail about them, or maybe some typical functions of them. Planes and movements have kind of put together. So whatever joint you've been asked to analyze, the movement will be occurring in a particular plane. You need to state the movement and the plane, um, or there may not be movement. So a particular joint might be static. It might have kept the same position. So often there will be movement, but just on occasion, sometimes the, the joint doesn't change and it is static. And we can talk about that when we talk about types of muscle contraction. So just be aware that the majority of these movements happen in pairs. So flexion, extension, in pair, always in the central plane. Dorsiflexion and plantar flexion um, are the same as flexion extension, but they are specific names of the movements at the ankle joint only. Just be mindful of that. And remember, you might need to define these for the icing sort of additional show off information. So flexion and dorsiflexion involve reducing the angle at that particular joint. Extension and plantar flexion are increasing the angle at that particular joint. Hyperextension is going beyond normal range of movement at a joint. So going beyond extension, if you like. Abduction, action, adduction, we know are a pair of movements. Um, lateral flexion stands on its own. So this is basically um, a trunk movement whereby you would bend to the side in the frontal plane. So you can have lateral flexion to your right and or to your left, bending down to your left. Depression elevation are shoulder movements or scapular movements. So it's lift, if you lift your shoulders up to your ears, that would be elevation, or if you drop them down, that's depression. Medial and lateral rotation are shoulder or hip movements. Pronation, supination are radial ulna. These are all rotational movements. This is of the specifically and only of the radial ulna joint, as you know. Supination is when you rotate your radial ulna joint, your forearms, so that your palm is up. Horizontal flexion and extension is kind of a funny one. It's a shoulder or hip movement, but it's when you have um, your limb fairly horizontal to the ground, so fairly uh, flat, I guess, to the ground, and you move it towards the midline or away from the midline. Protraction, retraction are shoulder or scapulae movements. A bit like when you row, when you reach forward to get ready to do the row, that would be protraction. And when you pull the blade backwards and squeeze your shoulder blades together, that would be retraction. And then don't forget circumduction. Circumduction is, is this 
movement that can happen at the hip or the shoulder only and involves basically a cone shaped movement so the distal end of your bone or limb makes a circular movement but the proximal end the end eye at your shoulder or at your hip stays kind of still if you like so you it's almost like you've got a sparkler and you're making a circle with the sparkler that's circumduction it goes in all three planes of movement so this shouldn't be new knowledge and what we're now going to do is add on the muscular content which needs to go along with the skeletal same skeletal analysis so we've got apt concepts everywhere to add remember so the apt refers to the the muscle actions going on at that joint and remember you're always going to have to state the name of the agonist and antagonist movement at each of the three joints that you've got to analyze that's basic cake icing could be to say what's the role of the agonist well it's the main muscle that contracts to generate movement it typically will contract isotonically to create movement so it will change its length um, it's also known as the prime mover. Any so any bits like that are lovely icing information. And the same applies to the antagonistic role for icing. So minimum cake, you've got to state the names of the muscles that make the movement happen or that are contracting um, or relaxing or lengthening at each of the three joints. I would suggest that minimum cake would also be to define the synergy, what synergist means. You may be able to give an example of a synergist muscle, but actually I think in some cases that's quite tough. Um, some joints it's easy to do and we'll have learned the ones that are easy. At worst, please just define what is the role of the synergist? I want this in your question 12 within one of the joint analyses. I don't, I don't care which. So I need you to define this somewhere. Same applies to fixators. You need to define what is the role what is the action of the fixator muscles during a particular joint movement? Now, again, I'll coach you that you might, as a default, be able to talk about core muscles being fixators because they are contracting concentrically during almost every movement you do to stabilise the trunk, to keep the trunk still so that your other movements, your other joints work well. We'll talk about that. So minimum. Can you define what the role of a fixator is somewhere in your question 12, 12 once? Um, perhaps you can use the core muscles. Your transverse abdominis is a really good one to name as an example of a fixator muscle that's contracting to stabilize your trunk. C, so at concerts everywhere. C is for, okay, at a joint, typically one muscle is contracting and one muscle is relaxing. What type of contraction is that agonist muscle doing? So you're only going to say one of these per joint. The agonist is contracting isometrically. The agonist is um, doing isotonic concentric contraction. It's shortening. So cake is to state the one agonist muscle, what type of contraction is it doing? It will not be the agonist is contracting uh, concentrically and the antagonist is contracting eccentrically. It is never going to be that. Only the agonist will need, um, will be talked about in terms of what contraction it's doing. <coughs> Excuse me. So, cake is stating the agonist muscles type of contraction. Which of those three is it? Icing is now teasing out this other stuff that you might know about that type of contraction giving that additional detail. That leaves us the, so you've done your three joint analyses doing Sexy Justin Bieber plays music at concerts. So you've done your musculoskeletal analysis for each of those three big paragraphs, your three joint analyses. What I'm gonna coach you to do as well is have a fourth additional paragraph that will have some description of the movement efficiency and these as you know are the six things that you could talk about i typically coach students to use these two because they're fairly transferable they're fairly generic and by that i mean you can talk about them in almost every action some of these are great to use and you could use I'm certainly not saying don't use them but they may be harder to apply in some 
um, question 12 movements. So I'm going to ask that you learn the phrases here such that you could write these applied to a movement of question 12 um, as a default and then any others you can learn or add all that are relevant are a bonus. So here's just a planning table. So you've used this sort of format before. Um, the cake content, what you must have, what you must know, and I've included the efficiency stuff in that, and then the additional show off extra detail that I'm going to hope that you can sprinkle in throughout those three paragraphs. Okay, so this will be your question 12 planning table. There's a blank one, of course. Let's look back at the example I showed you earlier, and I will give you some model answers that you can pause the video and have a look at. So it, remember, it was going from preparation to execution, basically jumping vertically and putting your arms in the air, 14 marks. Here's my planning table completed. You can by all means pause the video and have a look at that. So I've gone through each of the joints. What must I have? What must I have? What must I have? And I put some icing content in there as well. Here's my first big main paragraph on the shoulder joint analysis. And again, I typically put the cake in blue. I've linked it to the question. So I've talked about the athlete is doing the blocking action. And I have put the icing in red, often in brackets, I think almost always in brackets. So pause the video, have a read through that, see what you can take from that. Here's my paragraph two. This was the elbow joint. Again, I've referred to the question. That's something you must do throughout. Put my basic facts in blue. I put my extra information showing off stuff in red. If by any chance you have the same facts, the same cake, for example, on the previous one, the what muscle was it? anterior deltoid is contracting concentrically. And I put my icing about what that means. It shortens during tension, shortens in length during tension. What you must not do is waste time putting that same information again. Once you've done that bit of icing, consider it done and covered. You've shown the examiner that you know that. Don't repeat it. It's just a waste of your time. So there's uh, paragraph two. Here's paragraph three, the ankle. Have a little look. And here's paragraph four. So I put my absolute must learn it, my two, muscle balance and mechanical efficiency, the sort of way you, I want you to pretty much learn this because these you can apply to almost any movement. Okay, so I very much want you to learn those phrases. I've put some other additional things you could have said, but these are the must that you must learn. 